Thank you for joining us at Growth Track. If you want college credit for this class, you will need to sign up officially at churchoftheheartland.com. If you would just like to take this information and learn, that is totally free. Go right ahead. This is World Missions Class, Part 1. My name is Michelle Howard. We're going to open up in prayer. Father, I just thank you for this time with these students, Lord. I just pray, Father, that you um, enlarge our hearts, God, that we open up our hearts wide, Lord Jesus, and let you do what you want to do in each of our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. So it is a privilege to talk to you about world missions. Uh, I have had um, a lot of great opportunities in the past to um, get to go into different parts of the world. My first mission trip was to Russia in 94. And uh, boy, the Lord just like let me know that um, he just wrecked my heart for like a season for the Russian people. And uh, we got to, I got to go with a ministry called Josh McDowell Ministries, and um, we took over some really cool stuff. And uh, also I've been to Cuba and to Uganda, East Africa. So uh, we are gonna, we're just gonna talk a little bit about why missions, all right? Um, have you ever thought about the last words that Jesus said before he left the planet, okay? The last words that he said is to the ends of the earth. Okay, it was in Acts 1.8, which is, happens to be one of my favorite Bible verses. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Um, so when Jesus left the earth, he had missions in mind. All right? The word mission comes from the Latin verb, okay? Missio, which means to send. It's pretty cool. So literally... Missions has all to do about sending, all right? Sending is an action. It's a common theme all over God's word, you guys. Um, so it starts, think about like when like the church was getting ready to be birthed. Jesus, God sent Jesus, okay? John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God sent Jesus. Um, why did God send Jesus? He sent Jesus not to condemn the world, but to redeem the world, so that the world might be saved through him. God didn't send his son for judgment, but for redemption. So uh, in verse 34, it explains it a little bit more. For he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the spirit without measure. Who did God send to restore people to God? Jesus Christ, right? Jesus was sent to man teaching and speaking the words of God and giving the Holy Spirit. So Jesus shares in the word that he was passing the torch to us. Okay, that's what World Missions is about. God sent Jesus, Jesus sends us. Put your hand on your heart and say, that's me. Okay, that's me. If you know Jesus as your Savior, God has put a DNA in your life that is about sending. Okay, sending us to speech, speak the words of God. So scripture says in John 17, 8, for I have given them, that's us, the words that you gave me. And they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. So while Jesus is praying, he says, as you sent me into the world, so I will send them into the world, okay? As you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world. There you go. It's a foundation for the church, guys, okay? So just know it's not a new concept. It was from the get-go. It goes all the way back to Genesis. God sent Abraham, right? He said, leave your homeland, take it all, start walking, okay? He, he's sending him to the promised land, and it continues on in the New Testament. Um, so... The Word of God gives us our divine mandate for missions. So Jesus gives us this, this awesome commission in, in the Bible. He says in Matthew 24, 14, the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. This is an extremely important Bible verse for us right now in the Word of God. Like, it has to be, the Bible has to be preached all over the globe, okay? 
the globe is big. There's a lot of people, you guys. Sometimes people might say, oh, what about America? Yeah, America. What about America? Yes, America. But there's also people all over the planet. And it is not an idea that comes from your pastor. It's not an idea that comes from, a, it's an idea and a mandate from God to go all over the globe and preach the gospel, okay? So and that includes to your neighbor's house, to whoever God sends you to. I want you to put your hand on your heart and say, God wants to send me. You are gonna be constantly, as, you, as long as you are living as long as you are living and breathing, God is going to be sending, okay? He is going to put somebody in your heart. It might be to Africa. It might be to an old high school friend. Like suddenly you're thinking about this old high school friend, and he, you can't get that person off your mind. Like, why am I thinking about, why am I thinking about Pete? I haven't seen him in 15 years, right? The Holy Spirit brings Pete up again, over and over again. You know what he's probably doing? Preparing your heart. And then suddenly... Pete sends you a message. You haven't talked to him in 20 years. You know what? The Holy Spirit is preparing you to do what? Be sent, right? So it's not just, it's about whatever the Holy Spirit is leading you to do. So know, you guys, as a believer in Jesus and as a follower in Jesus, don't just wait, anticipate, ask. You know, you know just have, we need to have this kind of heart that says like, I have the most amazing thing in the world, that is Jesus. I have the most amazing um, opportunity in, to, to share the love of God. So um, do you know that um, as we, I think we just need to press in, you are all like wanting to grow in your faith, right? We need to press into God and we need to get a fresh revelation the fact that he wants to send us. He wants to send us. He wants to use us. Um, we carry the good news that the world needs. As we press, as we pray and as we draw close to God, we're filled with his truth. We're filled with his love. And then he sends us out to share it with others. So Jesus' fame someday is going to fill the earth. And each of us have a privilege to help, that make, help make that happen. It's part of God's will. It's part of the reason why we're alive, you guys. So, um, you know, as we think about the world, we think about, um, we have, sometimes y'all might have a pers some, some obstacles. I know I probably did when I was a young believer. Everybody's at a different place. But you might think, like, why would God use me? Why would God ever choose to use me? I have, I'm stained and I'm tarnished and I'm scarred. Perfect. You are the perfect person to, for God to use, okay? You, he doesn't want you to come to him perfectly. He wants you to come to, come to him willingly, okay? There's a big difference. He just wants willing souls that say, like, like the prophet Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, use me. You know, I'm going to encourage you, put your hand on your heart right now, my friends, say, here I am, God, use me. Here I am, God, use me. See, he knows, he knows your story. He knows who, ne who he needs you to send you to. If it hasn't happened yet, it will, right? Those, those scars of your past, those, those pains of your past, those things that have harmed and hurt you and broken you down sometimes, he will use those because he is the master healer and he knows who he needs for different missions. He knows who Pete needs to talk to, right? He knows who he needs to send. So when we think about the world, uh, this current population, you guys, about, is about 7 billion, 55 million. It's a crazy number of people on the planet, okay? And until Jesus returns, God's plan is to reach those people, okay? He wants them to hear about the love of Jesus. It is, it is like in his word over and over and over. There's scripture after scripture that talks about how much he loves people and he wants them to know. He wants them to have an opportunity to hear. So thinking about the world can be interesting. It can be overwhelming. It can be exciting. It can be disturbing. Uh, the more you learn about different parts of the world, it can, um, it can be really disturbing from the Syrian refugee crisis to um, Venezuela's 
crazy political system right now to the ups and downs of the economies all over the planet it can be kind of overwhelming so um, but okay as Americans it can be really easy to just be caught up in our own lives like we want to we want to help the world but we can get really busy like you're thinking I want to make a difference in the world but I don't have time to do my dishes right now you know my laundry is piled up everywhere what the heck am I going to be able to do so there are some things that we can do that we can grow as believers to remove some of those obstacles okay so what does God instructs us in the Bible about our assignment to the world in Romans 10 uh, 13 and 14 he says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Cool, right? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, let's think about this, these seven and a half billion people, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him, right? So somebody's got to tell them, right? Somebody's got to tell them. So in America, sometimes I might jump ahead a little bit, but in America, we can think, well, we do have a lot to share, which we do. Let's just send money to the locals and let the locals tell their people. Well, we're going to talk um, probably a little bit more next week that there are many places on the earth that have no legitimate church they are called unreached people groups okay so we can't just send money to have somebody tell them about jesus because there's nobody there okay there's nobody there to tell them so um you know the lamb of god is worthy to have people worship him from every tribe people and tongue People sacrifice their lives to make that happen. You know, old missionaries, it's like really cool. They would go, they would be sent at, back in the day, and the missionaries would be heading for their missions, and they would have all of their worldly possessions in their coffin, and they'd take a coffin with them. Because they expected to do what? Not come back home, and they expected very possibly that their life would be used to tell people about the saving love of Christ. So they knew like, I'm all in, I'm all in. Crazy, huh? There's some crazy cool stories if you read um, about missionaries and how God supports his mission, his people who like have his, have his plan in their mind and in their heart. Um, so we're gonna, I want you guys to understand that um, you can help God's plan in small and big ways, right? You, we can. We can, help the, we can help in small and big ways to accomplish the Great Commission, which is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. So we're going to kind of leave Plymouth and Logansport, where, at, where we're at right now, Africa, wherever your current location is in the world, and then we're going to think a little bit about what, have you guys ever heard of a worldview? What's your worldview? You're going to hear that kind of terminology, and if you think about it, what does that mean? What is, your, our, what is our worldview? It's kind of like a pair of glasses that um, we look at the world through. Everybody has one. So what's a, um, I have a couple questions I'm going to be asking you to think about your worldview. What is your worldview? Our worldview determines how we live. How we view the world affects how we act in the world. So it carries into our lives as followers of Jesus. If we personalize our faith and we don't integrate our faith into the life of Christ, into our world, um, we can find this really great personal satisfaction. We have our private comfort. We're born again. We're saved. We're going to heaven. But we really fall short of um, Jesus' assigned mission to be the salt and the light of the world. So we can like get caught up in like, oh, my blessings, my life, my family, even my church, okay? If we view ourselves as Jesus' agents of change and hope in the world, we're motivated. Suddenly, we make ourselves available 
suddenly we don't just live for ourselves. We don't just live that like, hey, I'm going to heaven. I get to spend eternity with Jesus. Suddenly you're like, hey, I can be used by God. I can be used by God if I am. And, and we open up our lives to be sent and um, pursue outreaches, pursue making our part, making our mark in the world. Okay, so the Christian worldview often originally, it originates from three major components, okay? So one thing that affects us is our life experience. It's based on our own personal experiences. One is our understanding of scripture. And the other thing that often um, affects our worldview is our own self-interest. So our, our experience, understanding of scripture, and our own self-interest. So our tendency in the Western world is we put a lot of emphasis on our own experiences and our, on our own self-interests. And we often do that at the expense of like the biblical mandates that God has for us. So actually what happens then is that we have truth for me instead of what truth is, okay? What's truth for me? instead of what's God's truth. How I feel about it oftentimes overrules the facts of scripture. If we live with only our self-interest before us, we're unaware of the world around us. We don't look at the hurting people that are not able to buy groceries. We don't look at world poverty that there's people that die from hunger at a, a shocking rate. We kind of get self-absorbed with our own needs. We turn our attention away from the world, and no matter what the Bible says about the poor or the eternal needs of people out, um, outside of Christ, we just kind of get caught up in our own self-interest. So hopefully, as you think, we are going to we kind of get like narrow a narrow view. And if you're young believers, as you grow in faith, Keep, keep expanding your view. What does, what's God's perspective? So don't, this is, don't, don't, don't criticize yourself, but just you can like, look like, do I need to expand? What, how do I need to grow in this? Um, getting God's view of the world challenges our natural self-serving instincts. You know why we sometimes, we know how we, why we narrow our view of the world sometimes? The more narrow our view is, the less responsibility we have, right? If I just don't watch those shows about no clean water within, you know, a hundred miles, I don't have to think about it, I have no responsibility. If I just don't think about that, those, you, you, if you don't, you can narrow it down to where you don't have a whole lot of responsibility. So um, with a narrow self-serving worldview, we close our eyes to the world's realities. We can forget about the fact that there's a billion people in our world that go hungry every night, that so, that large numbers of, there's large numbers of unreached people groups, groups that have never heard the name of Jesus. They've never heard the name of Jesus. We can pretend like America is the booming place where Jesus is moving when in all actuality there's some really strong Christian movements in Latin America, Asia, and Africa. We can, um, we can also, you guys, think that speaking about our faith and our relationship with Jesus isn't necessary because everybody's already had the chance to hear about Jesus, right? When in all reality there's so many millions of people who have never got to um, receive the good news. So a couple things, um, trends that like are in our culture that kind of hinder a worldview, um, a biblical worldview is isolationism, that's one. Okay, it's, it's a trend around a lot of churches, okay? It's focused, we, we adopt a worldview based on our limited experiences and our self-interests. 
um, we kind of, we become counterculture to following the Great Commission that God gives us in Acts 1.8. We, we kind of don't look for opportunities to touch the world, okay? So that is a block. So I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to talk to you about, like, a, I have a question that I want to ask, all right? So this is a question that can kind of help you think about your worldview. Okay, and it's gonna, it's gonna shake, I think it kind of, when I think about it, it shakes me up a little bit. Who is Jesus? Okay, that's a question I want you to write down. It's a dangerous question, who is Jesus? Jesus actually asks his disciples, who do you say I am? And the disciples asked of each other, um, they were like, they were terrified. Who is he? Like he's calming the storms. He's doing all these, these like miraculous things. The religious leaders asked of Jesus, tell us if you're the Christ, the son of God. Pilate asked of Jesus, are you the king of kings? Are you the king of the Jews? Saul, later Paul, asked it after being blinded on the road, who are you? Okay, that sounds pretty basic, doesn't it? That question sounds really basic, but it's kind of like the hinge on which everything else swings. It determines our sense of mission in the world and our outlook on people, okay? Um, we're in an age of religious pluralism. So if Jesus, if Jesus is among any way that you can have eternal life if they're like in, in school our schools are going to your kids in school are going to get to have a variety of options there's they're going to learn about buddhism they're going to learn about hinduism they're going to learn about all kinds of isms okay now it's relig it, they're going to learn about um the muslim faith so we have to ask ourselves who we say Jesus is. Who is Jesus? Okay. Now, if, um, if we think that there's any other way to heaven, you're not going to have a whole lot of urgency to tell people about Jesus. You're not going to, it's going to be like, ah, people are going to get there some, somehow, right? They're going to, they're going to make their way to heaven somehow. But if we, um, so if we look at Jesus as among many potential saviors, we will not comprehend a worldview built on the uniqueness of Jesus. Okay? Uh, the Bible says no one comes to the Father except through me. Right? It teaches salvation. Our, our, the Word of God says salvation comes through Christ alone. So if we don't have that conviction... You can't really understand what drives people to go all over the globe to tell people about Jesus. You, you, can't under, you don't understand it. You don't have like that, that understanding like these people without knowing Christ, they're, they're not going to make it. They're not going to make it to heaven. If there's any other way, okay, okay, somebody else can do it. Like it's it's, it's going to happen some way. All right, so... People like Hudson Taylor, who went to the interior of China, understood that um, these people needed to hear about Christ. All right, they, 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 um, if we get like kind of blinded by what's going on around us, you guys, we have to like really wrestle with that question. And if we just say like, yeah, I believe Jesus is the son of God. Yeah, I believe he's the only way to heaven. We've got to like wrestle with that. Like, do there's practices all over the planet, even in our own, in, even in our own communities, that absolutely show that people do not know who he is. And we've got to wrestle with the fact, like, I want to make sure that I am a part of like knowing who he is, so that I can I can be passionate about world missions, you know. So um, if we don't care, 
if we don't understand, then we just kind of like accept. We just kind of accept like there is, there's a bunch of different ways that, you, that people around the globe can make it to heaven and not have to suffer um, an eternity without him. So missions can be amazing, you guys. Missions like making Jesus known. We're going to, you know, we're going to arrive at that passion to make Jesus known as we, as we spend time with him, as we get that, as we get that um, revelation of who God is, of who he is, and then it is deposited in us. You know, I just think it's the greatest, greatest, greatest privilege to make, to make him known, to make him famous. Like you, you get, you get opportunities and you can have opportunities. Like it, I guess I just wanted to challenge, challenge us. Like you got to wrestle with that. Do, what do I believe about Jesus? What do I believe about him? What do I, do I believe that he is worthy to be to be talked about? Is it important enough for me to ask God who he wants me to share him with? Is it important enough for me to expand my worldview a little bit and understand that um, the message of the cross is the, one of the most important, the, one of the most important calls of the church today? All right, so do I keep so I'm going to wrap this session up right now, and um, we're going to take a break and come back in a few minutes. <laughs>